thank you very much. So I will talk about uh, the uh, ISA program, uh, which in these desperate times uh, is aimed uh, to help you with uh, some common services and reusable tools that you, you can use uh, to build uh, interoperable and reusable uh, services and solutions. First, I will talk about ISA, well, uh, which is a European Commission uh, program, European Union program, then about uh, two concepts, interoperability and uh, sharing and reuse. Then I will present you two tools uh, along uh, these concepts, the core vocabularies, uh, in just in case you uh, managed to miss uh, two presentations which are already mentioning these uh, core vocabularies. And finally, the ADMS and the catalog of reusable uh, building blocks. So about ISA, uh, ISA has uh, been initiated in uh, 2010. It's a European uh, Union uh, program with a budget around uh, 120 million over six years. And its objective is to foster interoperability between public administrations by helping them develop common services, reusable tools, uh, uh, common frameworks. It's built around two concepts. One is interoperability, uh, which we uh, define as defined by the uh, European Interoperability Framework. Uh, and uh, we all know that in order for public administrations to be interoperable, so to build interoperable services that can uh, exchange information, you don't only need the two lowest level of interoperability, so the semantic level and the technical level, which are uh, mostly discussed probably in this conference, but also you need to have a political willingness which allows public administrations to exchange information and then legal interoperability, which lets them, which gives them the mandate to, uh, to work together with each other. And of course, organization interoperability as well, which means that uh, they are aligned, their business processes and their structure, organization structure is aligned with each other so that actually there's a point of contact there that are reference points uh, uh, to which you can uh, contact with. And then the other concept uh, in the ISA work program is uh, the reuse and sharing. Uh, Seth mentioned before me that uh, sharing is uh, useful and fun, I think. I would just add that it can be also financially beneficial in some cases so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And by sharing your solution with each other in the long term, um, you can uh, also uh, hopefully uh, get some uh, financial uh, gain in that. So enough about the concepts. Let's just uh, talk about, uh, present you uh, in a couple of slides, what are the actual practical tools that uh, ISA has been helping or funding to be developed to help uh, uh, developers uh, build interoperable and reusable services and tools. So one is the core vocabularies. What are these? The core vocabularies, they are simplified, uh, highly reusable, very generic, and meant to be extended data models that you can use when building your uh, application to ensure that your application uh, keeps uh, a basic level of interoperability with other applications that use the same core vocabulary. Under the ISA program, we have developed uh, four core vocabularies and a fifth one on, uh, on data. It's an application profile for uh, data por portals, which are meant to capture the fundamental characteristics of different um, concepts, uh, data con uh, entities. One is, for example, the core uh, person, what it is about. Uh, you have numerous applications uh, related to public services which capture uh, data related to a person. If you're a student in a university, you, uh, they capture uh, perhaps your, your name, date of birth, uh, and so on, who, is your, uh, who are your parents. If you're a taxpayer, they perhaps capture some other set of information. And what we believe in is that all these applications, they capture a, a, a limited set of characteristics which are the same. And by uh, making a standard around it, making a, an agreed uh, spe open specifications which includes all these attributes, you can ensure that when you're reusing these uh, core vocabularies, you can ensure that later on when you try to integrate it with other systems that use these core vocabularies, you can have a basic level of interoperability. So just to show you that uh, these uh, core vocabularies were not developed in an ivory tower in uh, the 
let's say, the Berleman building in, in Plus Schumann in Brussels. Uh, we have been interacting with uh, numerous people, so more than 60 experts representing the academia, different standardization bodies, member states of Europe and also the US and, uh, and South Africa and Croatia to create these uh, vocal vocabularies. It was a highly iterative uh, uh, process. And the result of which is uh, this, uh, this uh, data model. Uh, I'll just highlight it, the ones which are related to the core location vocabulary. So you can see, you cannot read anything, I couldn't read either, but you can see that indeed there is only a very limited set of information that, uh, that is dealing with, uh, with, with the location. Now, again, the purpose of creating this was never to create something which is reusable out of the box so that you can just put in your application and you can ensure that you, you, you store everything related to location. The, uh, the idea was to make it easily extendable for your needs. So they're meant to be extendable. Why? You can also be sure, you can ensure a basic interpretive with other uh, applications that use these uh, core vocabularies. And they are available under a free license, a very permissive license on the joinup.eu platform, which is a, a collaborative platform uh, run by the European Commission. Now, this was just a tool to, to ensure uh, basic interoperability with uh, other applications. I would like to talk about also how you can ensure uh, that your application is reusable, it's, it's, uh, it can be found and uh, people, other people can reuse it and also that how can we make already available solutions uh, available and reusable by other administrations. So we already know that there are a large number of reusable building blocks um, which already exist in Europe. So we have uh, several national initiatives, repositories, we store semantic assets and even open source uh, uh, software. We have uh, standardization bodies which have highly reusable, highly relevant uh, standards around, um, uh, around uh, semantic interoperability. And we have various projects as well, for example, the Inspire uh, project, which also uh, develop their own uh, repositories and store uh, these uh, reusable assets. So how we could promote the reuse of this on a European level and also on a sector neutral level? Uh, we can promote them by increasing the visibility and also by making sure of already available repositories that store these components. So we didn't want to develop something which competes with these national and local initiatives. So the result of which is uh, the uh, European catalog. Uh, it's a federated catalog which stores uh, semantic assets and software. The, all of them are free. And it's available on the JoinUp platform. The JoinUp is, a, is a, a, a collaborative platform around interoperability, which any public administration, basically anyone can use. So we provide a number of services. So we have cre created this federated repository. It's based on an open specification. So the federation is based on an open specification. It's called ADMS and ADMS software which uh, is a way, uh, it's an open way to describe any software or any semantic asset or indeed any kind of interoperative asset uh, to, to be sure that uh, these descriptions are reusable and searchable. We already have uh, more than 1,800 semantic assets uh, from national repositories but also uh, from uh, different uh, standardization bodies, for example, SEN or OASIS. And we have 2,700 uh, open source software which is uh, freely reusable. So a couple of conclusions. So how can you promote semantic interoperability and also save some money along the way? So please uh, reuse existing interoperative standards. So go to join up or uh, once the arena is available, the Inspire arena is available, which is more focused on your domain, uh, go there and reuse already available things. If you create something which can be useful for others, a semantic asset, a vocabulary, a code list, and you believe that it's reusable, it's, a, it's, a, it's of high quality, please document it using ADMS and, uh, and upload it to JoinUp or uh, to the Arena platform to make sure that others can reuse it. And at last, please use the core vocabularies to make sure that your application at the end will be at least interoperable with every other applications on the, 
on the lowest level. And just one slide is that if you want to visit our initiatives, please just click on one of these uh, projects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, surely this is a very important initiative. It doesn't make sense for 27 countries, soon 28, all to be doing the same things 28 times. So sharing and reusing is very important. Just a show of hand, how many people knew join up already? Up, come on, any hands? You got some work to some do, work mate. To do still here. <laughs> so I think there's clearly an issue of how can you spread and how you, can you connect because surely there must be a lot of other repositories of open source, reusable solution in many countries. So how can you connect to all these? Yes, so the problem I think, uh, I, I could see it again, is uh, of dissemination, so making, raising awareness. Uh, we're already connecting uh, to, uh, in fact, a large number of national repositories and initiatives. On the semantic front, we are connected and federating already uh, from 22 national and international initiatives uh, uh, and on open source I, I think it's 12, 13 uh, uh, repositories. So on that part we don't have a problem. The problem is on the, on the dissemination part and how to raise awareness. So you need to come to a few more conferences I think. Yes, you need to increase your travel budget. So thank you very much Samolix. Another round of applause for him.